Hi booktube, it's Missy and today I am planning on doing a ton of films, at least until my husband comes home from work. So that way I can start uploading everything. I spent a good few hours um, last week filming videos and I hated them so I deleted them all and I'm going to start over. It's a, a waste of my time to do that but I don't want to put up crappy videos for you guys and I just didn't like the way it turned out and so I just meh I just got rid of it. So today um, you are going to see well my hair is extremely dirty I need to take a shower but before I go uh, I wanted to introduce you to the the birthday um, books so one second so Today, what I would like to do is I would like to do a bookshelf tour. Some people said that they wanted a bookshelf tour, and so I'm going to provide that for some people just so I can have some videos up. But really, the only the only uh, shelf you guys haven't seen is this one down here, and I hate that shelf because it's super tall. It doesn't make any sense, and it's a mixture of a whole bunch of different books. So I'm just going to ignore that shelf for now, and we're just going to, stupid cords, we're just going to focus on my birthday bookshelves. And I think that these are the only shelves that I'm going to be doing um, a bookshelf tour for this summer, just because this is going to take a while in itself. And uh, yeah, I want, I don't want you guys to have to watch bookshelf tours for weeks on end. Plus it's a lot of work. So these are the ones that I will be working on this summer. So yes, I'm going to take a shower and then we will get started on the bookshelf tour. I am excited to get started. Hello, I'm back. Okay, so here's just an overview of the back of the shelf that you guys never see. Um, if you do hear up in the background, that's because my youngest is watching up. And normally I close the door um, because they're usually loud, but it's too hot. And yeah, so I'm just going to leave the door open. Hopefully that doesn't um, irritate you too much. Uh, I'm going off of here. This is, you can see, um, the triangle represents my birthday shelves. This is shelf one. These are all of the titles on this shelf and these color uh, coordinated dots tell me what genre of book it is. So all of these are going to be sci-fi but um, they're also going to be something else. So this right here, if you guys can see that, that right there is a dark blue which is um, Dark blue is romance, or excuse me, dark blue, what is dark blue? Dark blue is, yeah, it is romance. Dark blue is romance. I don't think that was purple. Oh man, was it purple? Let's see it in the light. Oh, it was purple. Okay, <laughs> and that means this is a sci-fi fantasy. Uh, some of my pens look slightly similar, just like Mask of the Red Death. As you can see, there's purple and blue right next to each other, and they look exactly the same. So there's purple and then dark blue, which is fantasy, romance, sci-fi. So I'm going to be following these dots here to kind of like let you guys know what the books are in case you're curious. Um, I will also leave them here in the video like I usually do. And remember, these are books that I have not read yet. So I know the genres, but I don't know a full synopsis of them. Um, so I'm going to give you a brief um, tour of all of these books. And then, of course, I'll put all the information here. And yeah, if you guys like this video, please thumbs up it. Um, I never ever say that, and I always feel super weird 
asking you guys to, you know, like and comment on my videos. But it does help me to know whether I am doing it right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm not doing it right, I don't want to be doing it. And I like filming videos, but I get discouraged sometimes. So, help me out. All right, let's get started. I'm going to lift up the books so you can see, and I'll talk about them in just a second. All right, the first book we have here is Radiance by Catherine M. Valente. Um, like I said, this is a sci-fi fantasy. I've heard loads of people on YouTube talking about this book, and so I really want to read it. Um, Katie at Chapter Stacks really likes it, and so did... Oh, who was it? Mercedes, I think? From Marcy's Bookish Musings. I think she also really liked this book. Next we have The Marbury Lens by Andrew Smith. This is a horror oh excuse me yeah it's a it's a fantasy horror sci-fi um I do own Andrew Smith's Grasshopper Jungle and really enjoyed that book so I'm hoping I like this one too because it's supposed to be creepy and dark there is a sequel to this that I do not own I'm trying not to buy sequels unless I've already read the first book but you know how it goes I don't usually do that properly but I will be trying that out anyways um, I've had this for a really long time somebody else said this was good I think Katie also liked this book so yeah if you've read this one let me know down below the next book I have here is the only words that are worth remembering this is straight sci-fi this is from Jeffrey Rotter um, I got this from a friend I have no idea what this is about whatsoever um, again the synopsis will be for books that I know about. <laughs> uh, other than that, I'm just going to give you the genres that the book is under. I have here our Mask of the Red Death and Dance of the Red Death. They're both by Bethany Griffin. And Bethany Griffin, I don't know if you can see, but she wrote the book The Fall right here, which is one of my favorite retellings of Edgar Allan Poe. Um, so these are both a retelling of Edgar Allan Poe's stories. And I love Bethany Griffin's writing, and I, but I still haven't picked these up. I don't know what's wrong with me. These are both going to be sci-fi fantasy romances. And so I'm looking forward to reading them. They are so pretty. I just haven't done so yet. Story of my life. The next book I have here is Of Dreams and Rust by Sarah Fine. This is the sequel to Of Metal and Wishes, I believe. Uh, look, it's I'm right here. I'm so shiny. Um, anyways, I keep all of these sequels in the back and put all the first books in the front. So the first book is somewhere below um, all of my shelves. Anywho, this is also a um, fantasy sci-fi romance. I'm looking forward to reading these. Sarah Fine wrote a really good uh, series that I will leave a picture of here. I can't remember it because I don't own the series, but I did listen to all of them on um, audio and really enjoyed them. It's about the afterlife. That was a lot of fun to read. I have The Curiosity by Stephen M. Kiernan, and this is a sci-fi romance uh, fantasy as well. God, I have so many of those. Anyways, I really like this cover, and so I had to buy it. There's something about buttons that I really like. <laughs> buttons and clocks, and we have a compass here. Um, I think there might be a little bit of time travel in this book. I try to put that kind of stuff in the margins, but I didn't for this one. Um, I am definitely looking forward to reading this. If you have read this one, let me know down below how you liked it. Next, I have Monkey Wars. This was on my most anticipated reads list years ago. This is by Richard Curti. And I bought this book because, one, the cover is just so amazing. And, two, it reminded me of Animal Farm. But after I purchased it, I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like it because it is definitely a war book. Uh, this is a fantasy war book with animals. So the animals are the main characters, just like Animal Farm, the animals talk, and that is our POV. We have a whole society. There's like two or three different um, groups of monkeys or apes, 
that are fighting. And I think this takes place in India, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so one of these days I will pick it up. I, I just love the cover so much. <laughs> And lastly, we have just, well, just in that little stack right here. Last, we have Old Man's War. I need to take that sticker off. Stickers really bug me. Anyways, this is Old Man's War, the first book in a sci-fi opera. Um, I really love John Scalzi, and I can't wait to pick this up. Um, I've heard nothing but great things about this book. I believe there are six books in this series. I am, uh, I follow John Scalzi on Twitter, and I, he talked about Old Man's War just a few weeks ago. I don't know if he just came out with a new book in the series, or if they are being, getting new covers or something. I can't remember. Um, this is straight sci-fi. I can't wait to pick it up. Uh, it's about old people enlisting in war, so you can't join the military unless you're 60 or over or 65 and over which I think is hilarious so yeah I can't wait to read that let me know if you've read it next we have the obsidian series by Jennifer L. Armentrout I purchased this way back in 2014 when everybody was obsessed with these with this series there is a fifth book. I don't know if I'll even buy it or it's called, it's not Origin. Origin's the fourth book. Oh, I can't remember. Here's a picture of what it is. I don't know if I will buy it because these, all these covers match. And then the fifth book is in that really stupid glittery um, material, whatever. I like these ones. These are buttery. Um, I don't know the name of the main character. I thought it was Damien or something. I could be completely wrong. Anyways, this is an alien book. Uh, he is an alien and he has a neighbor and <laughs> they, he he's supposed to be brooding and she hates him and they end up like liking each other or whatever. Uh, this is again a fantasy romance sci-fi I don't know when I will ever pick these up. Um, they are supposed to be super cheesy, and I love a little bit of cheese in my life. So one of these days, I will definitely pick them up. Uh, let me know if you've read these. I just I bought them because of YouTube, because of the hype, and uh, never I just never picked them up. I don't know. Anyway, this is another series. This is a duology by Magnus Flight. This is City of Dark Magic and City of Lost Dreams. Now, these are also fantasy sci-fi um, romance books, but there's also a little bit of um, mystery in it. So it's a mystery sci-fi fantasy with a little bit of romance. I, I don't know anything about it. Um, I, okay, if I'm going to be perfectly honest, I got it because the, the author's name is Magnus. And I love Magnus Bane. I was like, ooh, Magnus. And then, of course, I, I liked the covers. And then I read the synopsis and it sounded really good. Uh, Conan O'Brien... Conan O'Brien is this the Conan O'Brien like the talk show host you can see it. it says this is deliciously madcap novel has it all murder in Prague time travel a misanthropic Beethoven tantric sex and a dwarf with attitude I don't know what any of that means but doesn't that sound great <laughs> I can't wait to pick these up Next, we have The End of Mr. Y. If you guys have been on my channel for a while, you must have seen this a million times. This is by Scarlett Thomas. This is a fantasy sci-fi book, and this was a straight cover buy. I mean, gosh, look at the font. There is a lantern in the center. Uh, I don't know what this is, but I own another 
Scarlett Thomas book that I purchased because of the spine. Yes, you heard that right. Um, I need to pick this up at some point. I can't believe it's taken me so long. I just, I want to. All of these books, they all sound so amazing. And they just sit in the back of my shelf, like hiding back here. I, I, I want to read them, but then I have so many on my floor that I keep picking up because they're closer. So lazy. That's lazy problems. Next we have The Road by Cormac McCarthy. This is also a sci-fi book. It's a movie. I haven't read this book. It's a Pulitzer Prize winner classic. Uh, I just, I don't know. I get this confused with uh, In On The Road, which sounds, which is also a classic. And I, I, is this dystopian? I don't know. Let me know down below if I should even pick this up. I've been keeping hold of it. I mean, the the font is big. The, the margins are big. There's no reason not to pick it up. I just haven't. My mass market paperbacks. We have Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. Uh, this was a necessity buy because after reading Meg by Steve Alton, I needed more animal books in my life. And by the way, uh, Erica, if you're watching this, I have started Meg. I know you started the read along on July 1st. I am late. Um, I was trying to finish up Ready Player One, but I'm reading Meg to my 13 year old as we, no, not right now as I'm talking, but you know, at night and he's also enjoying it. He really liked the first chapter and that's why I bought Jurassic Park because the fight between Tyrannosaurus Rex and Megalodon was pretty epic. And um, while we're talking about Meg, this is Primal Waters and Trench. So the Trench is book two. This is the sequel to Meg. And then we have Primal Waters, which is book three. Um, I don't have books four and five. And I think Steve Alton just released a sixth book to this series, which is insane. Um, I love Meg so, so much. It was my favorite book last year. Oh my gosh. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to reading these two. We have Communion, a true story by Whitley Stryber. This here is a nonfiction. I know, it's crazy. A nonfiction um, fantasy sci fi. Uh, I want this alien tattooed on my arm. Is that is that weird? This book I was obsessed with growing up. I never picked it up, but my grandpa had it on his shelf like while I was growing like while I was growing up and I was living with them and this cover freaked me out like I would have nightmares of these dang aliens that are drawn on this book and I've been obsessed with finding this exact paperback edition so when I found it at book off I about died I about died I needed this so so much and I'm happy that I finally have it on my bookshelves Yay! If you like aliens, like I am obsessed with watching alien shows on Netflix. If you like aliens, let me know down below. And speaking of aliens, this is also by Whitley Stryber. This is called The Greys. Now, The Greys are a sci-fi fantasy, right? Am I wrong? Oh, goodness. What is that color? I forgot what that color is. Thriller! <laughs> uh, it's a sci-fi thriller, so this is not a true story. This is fiction. Uh, but again, you have the alien. Aliens are so scary. I don't, I don't know what to say. Uh, next we have The Infinite Sea by Rick Yancey. Um, this is the second book of The Fifth Wave. The Fifth Wave, again, is down below one of the first books in front of the shelves because it's a first and this is a sequel. I have not picked up The Fifth Wave. Again, I bought this because of the hype on BookTube. This is an alien invasion book and so I am interested in reading it. Uh, yeah, that's all I can say about that. I, there is mixed reviews on this though. Some people say that uh, they like the Fifth Wave series. Some people say only the first book was good and everything else was crap. 
a lot of people hated this book, saying that it was a filler and that it wasn't needed. So we'll see whether or not it is good when I finally pick up the series. Next we have The Rapture of Nerds, A Tale of Singularity, Post-Humanity, and Awkward Social Situations. This is a straight sci-fi sci by, do by Dr. Corey Doctorow and Charles Strauss. Um, I don't know anything about this. This is a one of those um, hardbacks that don't come with a dust jacket. I loved the cover. Like all these little I illustrations of like robot parts or something. I thought that was really cool. And of course the neon green spine. Uh, Thanks a lot, books. <laughs> the neon green spine was to die for, so I had to have it. Um, yeah, I don't know anything about this book. If you've read it, let me know. I'm going to say that a bunch of times, and I do apologize. Maybe you could take shots each time. Uh, for those that don't drink, you can take shots of coffee. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I will probably be repeating myself over and over, and I am sorry. The next books I want to show you is all part of the same series as you can tell they have matching covers um, this is The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness this is a sci-fi fantasy book uh, it's about people who are telepathic like a whole society that is telepathic and that's all I know about it I received this hardback from Penelope she sent it to me ages ago and I was really excited and then I saw these two books at book off and I was really happy because I was like oh my gosh it's the same exact uh cover as the one I have at home but I was wrong because these don't match this cover and these are paperback and this is hardcover so I was really bummed but uh, at least I have all the books in the chaos walking trilogy so I guess that's a good thing. Uh, so we have the ask and the answer, and then we have monsters of men. Um, yeah, I don't, like I said, uh, yeah, it's a, a, bunch of, a, a society who's telepathic. That's all I know. The last set of books that I have for the back shelf is The Perfect Ruin by Lauren DiStefano, or DiStefano, if I can ever remember how to say her last name, and the sequel, Burning Kingdoms. Uh, I bought this book because it was a cover buy. Uh, it's got cogs. It looked like it was going to be a steampunk book. I was obsessed with the cover. This is a straight sci-fi, just like The Knife of Never Letting Go. I, I said it was a fantasy. I mean, it's it doesn't have it fantasy on Goodreads. It just says sci-fi, but I would assume that it's also fantasy. Anyways, look at this cover. Look at this cover. Why? Why did they change this beauty here to this? What is with this broken, like, Greek uh, statue? I don't understand how this has anything to do with that, but it drives me crazy. This, I don't remember how much this cost, but this was 99 cents. I'm assuming, as a hardcover, and it being 99 cents, that this is going to be crap, and that I should just give away the entire, uh, this is a series of like three or four books, but I want to read this one first, and if I don't like it, you guys can have it, but yeah, I have both, just in case. And then you have it, all of the back books. Now let's go to the front books. Those are the ones that I have already started so I can talk about them. First book in the front is Spook. This is Science Tackles the Afterlife by Mary Roach. I got to page 91 in this book. It's a little dry. Um, I was really looking forward to reading it. It's a buddy read with Keely over at A Bibliophile's Journey. I will leave her channel link down below. Uh, I was hoping it was going to be more but it's so scientific on how people used to weigh the spirit. So there was a man, I don't remember his name, and he was a scientist, doctor. He would weigh the, like the deathbed, which is kind of like a, I, I, it's just a giant weight. So he would weigh the deathbed and then he would put the body 
on it as they were like dying so they were still mostly alive and then he would weigh it and then after the person had died uh, he would weigh the body and it would be like I can't remember what the word is called but it would be minute like it would be so small of a difference but there would be a slight difference in weight and so he just assumed that that was the spirit um, being removed so he you could technically weigh the spirit and then whatever was left over was just your dead body uh, it is definitely fascinating but I haven't got into any like bunny bits where it would like mix it up and make it less dry um, it's just really technical and I want to pick it up soon so I can get on to her other books I do own stiff which as you can see is right here and that is her most her like more well-known book but I like the afterlife and so I was hoping I would really enjoy this one Next we have A Beautiful Evil. This is the sequel to Darkness Becomes Her by Kelly Keaton. I got to page 60 in this book. I loved Darkness Becomes Her so, so much. Uh, this is a mixture of paranormal and mythology. This girl right here, which is our main character, I can't remember her name right now. I thought it was like Ari or something. Anyways, she... Uh, I, I won't tell you, but maybe you can guess just by the cover... Uh, she is a being that um, is rare. She's the only one of her kind that people know of. And, uh, yeah, she's in the middle of a battle between mythology and paranormal. And it's uh, a little bit of a romance as well. Um, I don't want to go into spoiler territory, but in the first book she does start having like a thing for a boy that she met. The cool thing about this book is she starts off as a bounty hunter. Like her um, adoptive parents are bounty hunters. So she works for them. And one day she gets kidnapped. Or she's about to be kidnapped. And someone saves her. And they take her to New Orleans. To the district that got um, destroyed during Hurricane Katrina. And so she's living there with the paranormal kids. And it's just a huge mansion that's like waterlogged and desolate. And like the whole town is like destroyed. So nobody lives there anymore. But uh, she finds solace with these misfits. And she decides that she wants to stick around and figure out what's going on with her. And why she's so different. Because she was born with silver hair and purple eyes and I just thought that was amazing that was like the, the coolest like synopsis and then I absolutely love the book so the second book is really good I just haven't finished it I have The Uninvited by Cat Winters now I really like Cat Winters books they're all historical fiction and they're all paranormal the first two books that I read by her which is this one here and then this one um, those two books were really really good and if you haven't read a Cat Winters book, I would definitely start with this book because um, it'll get you like in the mood of how she writes. Anyways, uh, I really liked that book. And then this one I thought was going to be amazing. Uh, I read like first like 12 pages and I just couldn't get into it. This is about after a war. I don't know which war. I can't remember because I'm going to have to actually start this book over again because I don't remember anything. Uh, but this girl is talking oh maybe that's a different book are these the Jewish people oh, I can't remember I'm, I'm thinking of two different books at the same time uh, so I, I don't know if this one is about the girl who is running away from her family and then sees two Jewish men who are having their store ransacked by people who are against the Jews or if this is about the girl who allows soldiers to come in to her house to stay um, during the war and then they see ghosts or she's a ghost gosh darn it I can't remember anyways I, I need to pick up this book again 
Next we have The Beach here by Alex Garland's. Uh, I really like Alex Garland's writing. I read Coma by him a long time ago and then when I found this book I thought I needed it in my life because it's got these pretty colors and um, there's a movie with Leonardo DiCaprio in it uh, so I needed to buy it. I read 170 pages. It is really good so far. It's about a man who is in is it in the Philippines or <sighs> not the Philippines. Look how handsome he is. I'm trying to read the back to figure out where it is. It's about a backpacker that goes to Southeast Asia. So it's not the Philippines, but it's somewhere, somewhere around there. Anyways, he's backpacking and he comes across a man in a bar and the, he's talking about like the secret island that everybody goes to where you can like just hang out and like there's nobody it's totally deserted um so the backpacker decides to go with the man and they take this boat to this hidden beach and they like live there for like a good couple weeks and then they decide that they want to go back to the mainland um to get supplies also uh they've climbed up this like a waterfall and find this huge farm of marijuana I think or something and there's like people guarding it like with guns and so they're freaked out about that it, it's a very strange book but like I said it does have a movie that goes with it and so I want to finish the book so I could pick up the movie because I really like Leonardo DiCaprio god long story short I tell you what Next, we have American Gods. This is by Neil Gaiman. I absolutely love uh, this uh, edition. I had another edition, and I sent it to my friend Will, so that way we could buddy read this because he didn't own it. Um, but this is such a nice edition. I don't know why I like it so much. Maybe because it's so simple, and I love the uh, font. Anyways, this has a TV show that goes along with it. Um, I haven't watch the TV show because I haven't finished the book. I only got to page 80 and then Will and I had to stop reading it because he's in college and he just couldn't continue and so I wanted to pick it up again but I didn't want to read it without him so I don't know when we'll get around to picking this back up. Um, what I've read so far is very interesting. I like the fact that it's super fantasy and it's got like all these different like fairy tale creatures like a leprechaun um, steals the main character for a second and they're riding in a limousine and they're discussing something it was just really strange um, yeah and the man just got out of prison our main character just got out of prison and he's been contacted by another man another like uh, creature fairy fairy tale person who wants to employ him as a hitman I think <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, but anyways, I definitely want to continue reading this book. Got on this shelf. So this is 20th Century Ghosts by Joe Hill. This is a collection of short stories. I'm on a page. I'm on a page. I'm on page 180. Uh, I'm almost done with this book. I, I think there's only like three or four stories left to read. These are all very strange. They weren't my favorites. I am buddy reading this with Penelope. She didn't finish it either. Uh, one of these days we're going to finish the book. Maybe in, in October. I mean, we started this last October. It would be only fitting to finish it this October. So Penelope, if you're watching, we're going to finish this in October, okay? <laughs> no excuses. Okay, now we have There's a Slight Chance I Might Be Going to Hell. A Novel of Sewer Pipes, Pageant Queens, and Big Trouble by Lori Notaro. Notaro. I got this from Book Off forever ago, and I just, I loved how strange that title was. I think I got to page 30, and I was reading this for a, um, a read-a-thon, and I never finished it. It was like one of those read-a-thons that said, uh, read a book with a very long title. A title that's got like more than five words in it. And so I picked this one up. But I never finished it because I started it on a plane and I just couldn't get into it. It's about a woman who moves from Texas to like Colorado or something. And she's not like the people in her town. She's very like 
homebody-ish and all the ladies that live around her are gossipers and they're all about fashion and like your typical suburban women and she's not like that but she's trying to fit in uh, but nothing funny has happened yet or so I'm only in the very early stages of the book and I still want to give it a go of course I do because I don't really DNF books but I do need to pick it up soon so I can continue on with it Erica's gonna kill me this is Moby Dick by Herman Melville she read it last year or the year before and she's been begging me to finish it and I haven't I got to page 59 I am really enjoying this book but I just haven't picked it up since then. Uh, I get distracted quite easily when I'm reading. Uh, a, like a readathon will come about and I'll want to like pick up those books instead. And that's what happened with the majority of these books. I was in a readathon. I had to put these ones down. And then I just never picked them back up. But this is definitely a really good book so far. This is a classic. Um, I'm really enjoying what I've read. And so I, like I said, I just need to pick it back up. And then the last book in this tiny first pile in the front is The Talisman by Stephen King and Peter Straub. I'm on page 255. And, I mean, that seems like a lot, but this book is gigantic. It's about 700 pages, so 255 is nothing. Uh, it is so boring. I can't stand it. Um, I love Stephen King, and so I know it's going to get better, but right now the child is just walking and walking and walking, and he just got out of uh, working at this bar that he was almost, like, stuck in, and the man was really, really mean, and he, the boy barely got out of that job um so I'm, I'm like happy that he was able to like escape but uh, I just want him to get to um California where he's supposed to go get the talisman that he's supposed to get and then get back to his mom to make sure that she's okay like that's all I'm concerned about right now but the journey is taking forever and because we only have one character going in and out of um the real world and a like not uh it's like a it's a it's like a like a fantasy world like he's able to go into this other world that his dad used to go to um but there's bad people in that world and so he doesn't get to go there very often but I'm more interested in the fantasy world than in the real world but again the real world there are people searching for him too so We'll see how it goes. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Next, we have Fiendish Here by Brenna Yovanoff. I've read a few of her books, and I really enjoy her writing. She's super weird. This is an advanced copy that I won off of Goodreads forever ago. Um, and I picked it up, and I enjoyed it, but then I put it down, and I never picked it back up again. Story of my life. Uh, this is about a woman who was, or a little girl, who was buried in this house's basement for years like 25 years and finally someone finds her like this book is not book this house is going to be demolished or renovated or something and they found her down in the basement and for some reason she's still alive now the neighbor knows her the neighbor was a little girl when she was a little girl and uh which is really weird and so basically the little girl was buried in the basement by a witch using like a voodoo kind of magic. And so now she's like trying to pick up, the, up, up where she left off, like find out who it was, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so it sounds really, really cool. And this cover is just fantastic. I was so excited when I won this book. You have no idea. I do own another of her books and I have read two others. So I know that I enjoy her writing. Uh, I just still haven't picked it up. I have Burning by Danielle uh, Rollins. She's also Danielle Vega. So I don't know why she writes under two different names. Because they're both kind of the same genre. Anyways, uh, I started this on my Kindle because I got it from NetGalley um, for free for an honest review. And then I, I wanted, obviously, to buy the hardcover, so I did. Um, and I'll, when I'm waiting for like the laundry or something, I will read it on my phone. But currently I'm on page 42 and it's about girls in a juvie 
where this really tiny little girl comes in and she's evil, they think. But I think she's got like fire starter powers because she just made the um, the tray in the girl's hand like really hot and then the girl's fingers got burned. So I'm assuming that the girl's got some kind of like pyro kinetic energy that she's able to do and that's why she's in here because she starts fires. I don't know if it's going to be another fire starter kind of thing. We'll see. We'll see how I like it. So far it's okay. Uh, the girls seem, you know, <laughs> they don't seem mean or anything even though they're in juvie. I don't know what they're in there for, but I'm liking it so far. Next we have The Goblin Emperor by Katherine Addison. I got to a page 148 before I put this down. Um, I read this with Keely over at A Bibliophile's Journey and Penelope over at Penelope's Picks. Again, their links are down below if you want to check them out. Uh, this is about a, um, a troll. No, duh, it's a goblin. <laughs> it's about a goblin who um, lived with his mom in a whole different city. And uh, one day his father and all of his brothers die in like a zeppelin or something. There was like this huge crash and everybody dies. And so he ends up inheriting the entire kingdom. So now he is king or emperor. And he's never lived this kind of life. His mom was a, uh, she worked as a, cut a laundry lady or a, she would, so close I cannot remember um, but it, it's so far it's okay I just I hate the fact that all of the words all sound the same like all the names sound like the cities and it's really hard because this is like a high fantasy book but I really wanted it because it said the goblin emperor and it reminded me of the goblin king which again reminded me of labyrinth um, it has nothing to do with labyrinth um, I am almost halfway through. I would like to pick it up eventually and finish it. We will see. I don't know. Next we have Marcellus 2 by Daniel Vega. Again, this is aka Danielle Rollins, whichever one you want to go by. It's the same lady. Uh, she wrote the Marcellus, the pink cover right there. I really, really like that one. Uh, it's about torture and exorcism. And this is its sequel. I got to page 142 which uh, is just about halfway through the book. I'm liking it so far. The girl from the pink book um, ends up having to go to a school, like a boarding school, because her mom has been murdered or she just died. I think she was murdered. So she has to go to this boarding school, and it's a like a almost like a Christian private school. And so she has to follow all these rules and she's really worried about uh, her past and she's worried about the present and she likes this boy. And of course that goes on badly. Um, what I'm wondering is if it's going to get as good as the first one because the first one's got demons and everything in it. And I'm hoping that this one's going to have demons in it because there's two other books after this. There's four books total in the series and I just want to continue on with it. So we will see. Next we have Ghostly Echoes by William Ritter. This is the third uh, book in the Jacoby series. I absolutely love this paranormal mystery series. We have Jacoby and we have, oh, what's her name? Abigail. Her name's Abigail. And uh, he is a paranormal detective and she is his assistant. And it's just amazing. I pre-ordered this book because I needed it in my life. I talked to William Ritter on Twitter saying how much I love his books. I was so excited when he responded. I just, I love them so much. And I've been procrastinating on reading the last two books because I don't want Jacoby to be done. Like, I'm really sad that he stopped writing books for this series. And hopefully he starts a new one soon because um, I did really enjoy them. Yeah, but I did, I need to start this. Uh, I did actually start it, but I'm like seriously on page like six or something. So I, all I know is that the ghost that lives in Jacoby's house 
this is like her story, so I'm excited to continue. Next we have Blood and Salt by Kim Lidget. I didn't know this was by Kim Lidget. So now I have two books by Kim Lidget, and I talked about a third book that she has written that's coming out this month in my most anticipated reads of July. Um, but this is Blood and Salt. It's about two girls who live in the woods and their parents, uh, they're, they're somehow they're evil. And I don't remember if they kill their mom and then take off into the woods, uh, but they're twins. Something happens and they're like little demon children and they like eat fear. I Gosh, I can't remember. I am literally on page 20. Uh, I haven't even gotten that far in, but what I've read so far is really good. Um, they live in the woods and somebody comes and checks out the woods and they are they sense these little girls. I think they even are going to like take them out of the woods and then something bad's going to happen. Oh my gosh, I can't remember. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to restart this book, but it was really good while I was reading it. Girl of Nightmares by Kendar Blake. This is the, the sequel to Anna Dressed in Blood. Now I listened to Anna Dressed in Blood um, on audio and I hated the narrator, but I liked the story overall. So instead of listening to this one on audio, I decided to pick it up and read it, you know, by myself, and I just couldn't. Uh, I just, I don't know. I, I keep holding on to this book, even though I don't own Anna Dressed in Blood, because I want to finish it. I've only read, like, maybe a chapter, but I think, I think if I don't have this book done by the end of the year, I'm just going to give it away. Because I did finish the first one, and that's all that matters, really, especially since I barely even started this one. I don't have real attachments to it, but I do want to know what happens to Anna and our main character. So, ugh, I'm on the fence. Have you read this book? Let me know down below. This is Catacomb. This is the third and final book in the Asylum trilogy by Madeline Rue. Uh, story of my life, I pick up series all the time. Read the first book, read the second book, and then never get to the third book. I don't know why that is. It just happens. Um, so far, the main characters from books one and two are on a road trip um, trying to hunt down more information about the uncle that owned the asylum. Um, I don't want to go too much into depth about it, but this book is really cool because it's got those weird pictures. Like, let me see if I can see the See the weird pictures? I love books that have pictures in it. And um, so, and this is about an actual asylum. So I was really, really excited to pick it up. And I'm still excited to read it. Um, I'm hoping to get to it soon. I have read, like I said, books one and two. And two or three novellas that go in between all those books. And so, yeah, I need to, I need to finish it. Next, we have Guile here by Constance Cooper. I actually requested this book from the publishing house. I think it's HMH. I can't remember. That's not what's on the side, but I know I requested this. They sent it to me. I was super excited to read it. I got to 148, and I just put it down because it's just not very interesting. It's about a girl who lives in a bog-like area of the South, um, kind of like where Calypso lives, you know, in Pirates of the Caribbean where they had to go through those boats and people like live in trees and stuff. <laughs> Anyways, um, the water where our main character lives has guile in it. So there's some kind of chemical or magic or like poison that is in the water. And if you spend too much time in the water, you end up turning into something else. So for instance, her cat, uh, when it was a kitten, fell into the water and she thought it had drowned. Um, she finally finds it and when she dies, it's able to talk. So her best friend is her cat and her cat can talk. Um, things that fall into the guile, the water, ends up sometimes having a good presence or a bad presence and the girl can sense these kinds of things, but her cat can sense it more, and so she works with it. So if someone needs help removing or um, a, an item that has guile 
in their possession, she can find it and remove it from their home, and then they won't have bad juju or bad luck anymore. Um, so far, it's, like I said, it's just okay. This is a three-star book. I want to finish it because it's on my shelf, but I am not interested, and when I finally do finish it, I definitely won't be keeping it. Next we have Undertow, and this is by Michael Buckley. There is like three or four books now in this series. I purchased this because of its cover. Uh, not purchased, excuse me. I requested this from, is this from HMH? This is from HMH. I requested this because I really was interested in reading it. And then I got, I got turned off in the first, like the second chapter because the main people who live like this near this Coney Island area, these alien um, sea creatures come up from the ocean and they are battling, not really, but really with the humans. So they have this whole encampment on Coney Island and they want to let their aquatic people go to school. And the humans are like, get out of here, which kind of reminded me of that black and white video that you can see where that black girl is trying to go to school and people are like lined up watching her go because before it used to be segregated which is awful and so this is the first black girl that's going to a school that is not segregated anymore so she can go to school with white people and there's a bunch of people like screaming dirty things at her and throwing things at her and there's like police force all over and this kind of reminded me of that video that I saw in high school um, because all of the humans are standing around watching these aquatic creature people come up and try to enter school, and it turns me off. I'm like, oh, I don't want to watch read this if there's going to be like all this like racism in in the book. Like maybe it's not even about that, but that got under my skin for some reason because I'm so about equality. Like why can't everybody? I'm not going to get on like a soapbox, but why can't everybody just live? peacefully like why is there so much hatred <laughs> and so the book starts out like that like with so much hatred and I just didn't want to finish it if it gets better let me know down below otherwise I'm just seriously I'm just so done with this book I just want to get rid of it Ugh. next I have Feral here by Holly Schindler and now that I'm thinking about it I think I have been confusing this book with Blood and Salt Maybe this one is about twins that live in the woods because it, it makes more sense because it's called feral. And maybe this one is about something else. Either way, I have only read a little bit of both books, but I am really interested in both of them. Uh, these are both horror, so I need to check it out ASAP. I'm starting to run out of room. Uh, this is Special Topics of Calamity Physics or In Calamity Physics by Marisha Pestle. This is her very first book. This is her debut novel before she wrote Night Film. And this is about a man and his daughter. The man is a professor and the daughter, uh, they travel a lot. I don't know why they always are traveling, but he's, a and each chapter is a book title like a classic book title or something to do with books so I was really interested because of that but it, it reads so far it's really boring I, I don't want to say it's boring because it's pro supposed to get better I think this is a mystery I can't remember I keep meaning to pick it up and I just don't I need to finish it I need to finish it because I really like her writing and night film was so good it was a, my favorite book in like 2014 so I don't know what I'm waiting for on this one. Don't Freak Out. This is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, uh, of course by J.K. Rowling. I have read this book many times. I am currently reading this to my children. And when I say currently, I started this book like three years ago to read to them. And then we stopped for a whole bunch of other books. So we are listening to this on audio in the car whenever both of my children are in the car at the same time. Because if it's just my youngest, then we are not allowed to listen to it because he only wants to listen to music. And if my oldest is in the car, uh, we can listen to it if it's just me and him. But he rarely is just in the car by himself with me unless I'm going to pick him up from a friend's house. <laughs> so uh, I, I want to finish this with him because literally, like... It needs to get done. This is my least favorite book because Harry Potter is so stinking whiny in this book. It makes me cringe. I'm just, 
I just need to get to the next book because he's just complaining about how him, he, he nobody likes him, he didn't get to be prefect this year, nobody believes him about Voldemort coming back, and uh, oh, you know, Dumbledore's not paying any attention to him, and he's supposed to be the chosen one, and no one wants to be friends with him, and everybody calls him a liar. It's like, shut up, shut up. First world problems, shut up. Here's another giant beast of a book. This is Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray. This is the sequel to The Diviners. The Diviners is right here. Um, Penelope and I started this book maybe even two Halloweens ago. I can't, I don't think it was last Halloween. It had to have been two Halloweens ago. Um, and we haven't finished it either. Wow. We are terrible at buddy reads. Um, the Diviners, <laughs> I like how you can see it in, in, in the shot. Uh, the Diviners was so, 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 so good that I'm nervous about Layer of Dreams for some reason. The Diviners is a swinger, like a 1920s swinger paranormal horror novel. There's a lot of 1920s lingo in it, which is absolutely fantastic because it's like the cat's pajamas and the bee's knees and there's an occult in it. And so this is going along with that one. They're, they all have the same characters, but it's all about dreams this time around. And one of the side characters from this one um, does more things in this one. I Because I haven't gotten that far, I think I only read like 80 pages. I really need to pick this up. Penelope, again, we, we need to finish this in October. No more slacking. All right, the last two books I'm just going to hold because my hands. I'm lazy. Uh, this is Bloodlines by Rochelle Mead. This is the first book in the spinoff series from the Vampire Academy. Loads of people loved it. Loads of people hated it. Uh, Penelope, I think, is actually not going to finish this series because it's just not as good. Uh, we have here, I can't remember her name. She's the human from Vampire Academies and the Vampire Love Triangle Man. Uh, Aiden? Adrian? Oh gosh, I can't remember his name. Sydney and what's the boy's name? I don't know. I don't know. But that's Sydney. And she is an alchemist. And it's all like her story. So I haven't gotten that far either. This was another buddy read. Penelope actually finished this one though, and I didn't. Boo, story of my life. And the very last book on my shelf here is a naked hardcover, The Dust Jacket. I don't have it. This is The Looking Glass Wars by Frank Bedore. Uh, this is a Alice in Wonderland retelling. I did get, you know, a nice chunk in, maybe 50 pages. I was listening to this on audio. Um, it's really good. It's about... Like I said, it's just a retelling of Alice in Wonderland. I haven't gotten far enough, but they are fighting against the Red Queen. And the Red Queen is super evil in this one. And there's a lot of military strategic kind of stuff going on. Uh, I do want to finish this soon. We will see. And there you have it. The very first, <laughs> the very first shelf on my birthday shelves. Wow, this is going to... This is such a long video. I do apologize. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will be back with this shelf uh, later. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will talk to you soon. Bye!